Welcome back. In the second segment, I'll teach you more about the searches we can do using the library website, beginning with the topical general searches. As I said before, the general search function is helpful if I know exactly what I am looking for. But another reason I might choose to do a general search is if I don't have any clues as to where to begin looking for research on my topic. If this is the case, you don't want to just type random words into the box, however. Rather, you'll want to use search cues to refine your efforts. The cues I find most helpful during searching are and, or, not, the asterisk, and quotation marks. And allows you to search for two terms at once. For instance, if I'm researching childhood obesity, I want to search childhood and obesity so that I don't have to wade through results that look at adult obesity or childhood more generally. If I'm looking across synonyms, I'll use or. Or searches for either term, like college or university, collecting results on both terms. Not exclude certain terms from my results. So if I'm interested in searching media, but not media related to newspapers, I'll search media, not newspapers. The asterisk allows me to search for multiple forms of the same kind of word. I study writing and composition. So when I search for writing, I'm also interested in terms like writer, write, written. The asterisk allows me to search all terms that begin with W-R-I-T. Be careful here, however, because if I shorten a term like veteran to V-E-T asterisk, my search results will also bring me words like veterinarian. Finally, the quotation marks allow me to group a phrase together, like teen drug addiction. Quotation marks are great, too, when I already know the title I am looking for. You might read a source that uses strong examples of research in your topic, and you shouldn't be afraid to go to their references section and search some of the titles that they use. Now that I have my terms, I'll go back to my general search. At this point, I'll look to my research question or topic, and I'll identify some key terms that will help me as I search. I'm going to use those search cues that we talked about. While it might be ideal to find a source that touches on all of these key terms, it's more likely that I'll have to do multiple searches and then use my voice to place those sources in conversation. Remember Burke's party metaphor. Nevertheless, I'll place some of these key terms into the general search. As you can see, I have too many sources to manage, so I'll narrow my search options. First, I'll be sure I'm looking for full text sources, which are available at FSU. Next, I can select specific disciplines. If I'm unsure what disciplines to narrow to, I don't have to select anything. But if I'm looking for a particular kind of resource, I can. I'm looking at media representation, so I'll select arts and entertainment, drama and theater arts, and literature and writing. But I'm also concerned with human rights, which is a legal issue, so I'll select law. Because I'm looking at modern media representations, I'll narrow my year to 2000 or more recent. The year range is important to consider. If you are researching something medical or scientific, for example, you probably want the most recent research. But if you are researching attitudes from a certain time period, you might look for sources published only during that time period. I can also select peer reviewed. Peer reviewed sources or scholarly sources have been reviewed and affirmed by experts within a certain discipline. If I write an article on cardiovascular health for the New York Times, for example, my editor might look over my writing, but she's not an expert in heart medicine. A newspaper article is what we would call a non-peer-reviewed or non-scholarly source. A peer-reviewed source, however, would go to a panel of experts in that field who approve of the research that has been done, making the source more credible. These filters have really narrowed down my search. I'll begin by skimming titles to see if there is anything that I might be interested in reading. I like to read the titles and the abstracts. Once I find something I like, I like to open the PDF or get the book and skim. Skimming is not deep reading, but in a few minutes, I can get a surface level understanding of what the text is about, and I know enough to know if this is something I want to read more deeply and work into my paper, or if this is something that isn't exactly related to what I'm focusing on. 
Again, this is a good time to also pull a citation to proof later. When I'm ready, I download and save the file for reading. 